close. Come on, close. Notice now, though, that the fog is white. It's never been white before. Oh, I said close the first door. Um, it's never been white before, and so it doesn't actually have the same um, gloomy, eerie, um, malevolent feeling that it did before, at least to me, and I think that that's a huge improvement. I think that everything around here in this game, with the serene um, environment and, and just everything that's going on, everything feels positive except that that warped, distorted, unsettling moment in the music. So it seems like it is a step towards something better. And okay, like I said, what was the first door? White smoke. It's not so bad in here. I. I might be able to sit in here and feel a little bit more relaxed. Maybe if it wasn't such stark gray walls. But remember that earlier in the game it was mentioned uh, something to the effect of, Oh, it's so nice in here, you just want to stay. And I didn't feel that at all. But uh, maybe here I do. Alright, now just press the switch here. And voila! Ha! That was so simple! You can't talk yourself out of loneliness. It doesn't work that way. You He's can't so be right. the one writing both the questions and the answers. Then there's no movement. Then there's no circulation. If all of your anxieties are being channeled into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. Ha, huh, that was so simple. I can't believe I never solved it before. Um, what he just said right there, you can't talk yourself out of loneliness. I feel like he's so right. Um, I don't want to, I don't know if he's going to say anything after this, so I want to just stop for a second and address that. That, that hits me really hard. It seems it's, it's actually really profound. Um, because if you're really lonely, if you're in a crisis, and for whatever reason you feel like you can only go to yourself, uh, to your own mind, you cannot, in a mentally healthy way, solve that problem. Um, the problem has always been in your own mind, so no matter how you try to fix your own problem, especially if it's loneliness, the key to that prison, that problem, that loneliness, that loneliness can only be unlocked from the outside. And if you try to, if you're desperate enough, if, if you reach that point where the only, the only fulfillment of that need that you have and you really are to the point where you believe that the only thing you can do is turn to yourself, then the inevitability is fragmenting yourself in a desperate attempt to create someone you can trust. Somebody that can give you the answers to, the, to your questions and fulfill your needs. But... Those, those fragments, the way you fragment yourself, the way that Coda is, creating people who ask questions for him to answer to, people who are giving him directions, giving him advice, all these social interactions are these people that he's creating from his whole, but on some level. I think on some level, he's he really does realize that those fragments are just air. And in the end, he really does know that he's only talking to himself. And that's never going to be enough. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for a little bit of a rant or lecture. Let's continue. Oh, shit. Okay. Hello. 
I need to see it to know why it stopped. Deal! Hey, I recognize this. I'm trying to find this engine that used to protect me. Start it again. When I try to create, I feel empty. Hello? Is anyone there? I'm interested in this whole engine idea. I'm trying to find this engine that used to protect me. I'm not really- Oh my god! Oh my god! That's- That sounds like crying. I'm gonna- I can't leave. Oh my god, that is crying! It's a woman crying. And I don't like it. Okay. I don't like it. This is so unsettling. Alright. Aha, uh -huh, that was so simple. I can't believe I never saw it. Okay, here we are. What are you talking about? There's no machine here. These are just words on some wall. Oh my gosh. Trust me, you'll see. You have to say that your work is fun and easy. You have to say that game development is simple and joyous and that you love it 100% of the time. Options are, okay, making games is simple, sure, making games is easy. <sighs> that crying is a bit distressful. Or, alright, making games is effortless. Let's go with the- <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Ah, that feels wonderful, and we just broke down a section of this wall into more dialogue. I get it, that's a weird thing to say some- to say to someone- you just met. These are all dialogue choices that we made. Or maybe that were possible. I don't know if I made all of these, but you have to open the door. These are just words on some walls. No, I don't remember having to go through any puzzle. Ah, oh, that feels wonderful. Options are, but it wasn't true. Why did the walls just crumble? Why did I feel so awful when I said that? Oh... <laughs> Right in the feels. I have to go with three. Why did I feel so awful when I said that? Don't worry about it. Just keep talking. Keep saying that creation is easy. This section is really hard. He is, he in the, in the red dialogue is telling himself to lie. He's telling himself to force it. This is so unhealthy. He is going to himself saying, I have a problem here. There's something wrong. Uh, my problem is I can't create anymore. I feel empty when I try to do it. I'm, I miss, I'm, I'm missing that machine that was protecting me. And, and he's, he's really reaching out and crying out, but it's only to himself. So it has to be flawed. And his own self is, the response is, force it, do it, say it anyway, lie to yourself. And I feel like, even though, I, I feel like even though he is forcing himself to say this, what that is, is, it's, it's a, it's like his soul is crying. Because he knows it's not true. The dialogue says he knows it's not true. He feels awful when he says that. <sighs> but I guess we have to keep going. So keep saying that creation is easy. Uh, when I make games, I feel completely energized. Lie. I am constantly excited and enthusiastic about my work. Lie. It is easy. It never stops being easy. Lie. And we got another thingy. Yes, there was a world stamped in this game at the time that he made it. It looked really unhealthy to me. I was Agreed. watching him do this to himself, and I hated it. I hated seeing him so trapped. It's like video games are not worth this amount of suffering. And it really does feel like suffering. And you know what? These aren't just Holy shit. These aren't just dialogue choices. Have to remember that these are all dialogue choices from games that he's made throughout all of his games. So, I haven't been keeping track of the timeline, but this is probably like a year ago that some of these dialogue choices opened up. 
what is it? Yes, there was a world stamped in darkness. Uh, I get it. It's a weird thing to say to somebody who just met. Hey, it's me. Uh, I'm you from after you escaped the prison. Can you imagine? He created all of this and these quotations after looking back at his previous works. God, that's crazy. So it stuck with him. He didn't actually just create them and then move on. Move them to the recycling bin. Delete them forever. Like, Davy kind of made it seem like he did. He couldn't have because he remembers. He remembers all of these. These are from his past games. <sighs> yes, that's wonderful. Keep going. Every time I make something, I feel better about myself. Which we know by now is the opposite of what he feels. All these dialogue choices are the opposite of what he feels. That crying is bothering me. Just never stop creating and you'll never feel bad. Or it's such a simple solution. Uh, trust me, you don't want to go over there. How about a TV? This is with someone I really cared about. And I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. For him to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this, it was the worst thing for me. Perfect. That feels fantastic. But which part of himself is saying the red dialogue? If you can put an identity on it. But we can't because he doesn't... He doesn't explicitly put an identity to each portion of a dialogue so which part of him is saying this that he loves hearing it feels fantastic because the person who's responding in white the choices that we're making feels like it's actually his inner self his real self none of this is helping I'm going to vomit please where is the machine yeah if it were me it would make me feel sick to be denying yourself so much. Patience, you have to trust me. I promise this will work. Please continue. And I can only imagine that the longer he does this, every answer he gives that is a lie is harder and harder and harder. And I believe that this person crying in the background is himself crying as he's denying himself what he really feels. And just like what Davy said, it's not, he doesn't understand why it's worth the suffering. Why are you putting yourself through this? Pain breezes effortlessly off me. Any sacrifice made for my work are uh, worth it 100% of the time. It always pays off eventually. And I think that everything that we're saying uh, these options aren't really an option as in you choose one out of the three. I think that these are read as a paragraph. I think that it doesn't matter which one you choose. What he's really saying is all of them. Instead of choices, the entire thing he's saying is pain breezes off me. Uh, pain breezes effortlessly off me. Any sacrifices I make for my work are one worth it 100% of the time. It always pays off eventually. Yes, more. Keep going. I don't know. This is what I felt at the time. I don't know how else to explain it. I wanted it to stop more than anything. I had never felt so rotten. I just... I needed more than I had ever needed anything for this to stop. And I have to be honest, if this was something that I was seeing, if this, if this were something that was happening, this is something that was created by somebody that I really cared about, a good friend, I would be concerned. I'd be really concerned. I would see that they have a need and they're not, they're not dealing with it in a healthy way. And I would feel terrible watching this to see them doing to this self, to uh, see this see what they are doing to themselves the way that Davy is, I think... I think it must have been really painful for Davy to just sit by and watch this happening. 
Yes, more, keep going. There is no shame, no fear, and no guilt. I will be saved by my work. I believe this unquestioningly. I am a vessel for certainty. Doesn't matter what I choose, all of them are correct. And we have the prison again! Incredible, that's it, I'm free. I'm free. What's free? It can't be his creativity. It's a... It, so we have the prison again. We have the lamppost, which signifies a destination, an objective. That is a person! Oh my god, that's a person! That's a woman! That's a woman crying! But it didn't stop. After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. Oh, that's awful. Oh, that was really heartrending. <sighs> that was probably one of the most painful to play levels that we've encountered so far. It's so explicit and raw in his emotions and his feelings. In the previous games, we felt maybe symbolism. We felt themes. We felt a, a little bit of undertones of things that we might be able to interpret. But in that, in that, it's just so raw. It's like he reached a point where he's so desperate that insinuating symbolizing isn't enough and to see that entire journey to see that entire journey that he's made and then ending there is really painful it's hard so now we have the door the door that we are now very familiar with the door that we crashed into in a spaceship and the door of the puzzle that we've seen for a really long time now. I, I haven't been keeping track of the timeline, but maybe if this took him seven months between the last one and this one, I'm assuming it's been a couple years, maybe two years, two and a half years since he first started. And we have an NPC that's a guard. Ma'am, glad to see you've arrived safely. We captured the machine, it's waiting for you now. You can begin the interrogation whenever you like. Why am I a ma'am? That's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Options are I intend to be quick, I intend to be quiet, or I intend to be brutal. Actually, actually, that's that's really different from a lot of the dialogue choices that we had in the past. Um, because they are very different approaches. In the past, we've had some different choices, but they didn't really contrast each other. They didn't seem like they were all that different from each other. And in the last level, it seemed like all choices were correct. All choices were true. But this one, I guess being quiet and being brutal are opposite. This seems like an actual real decision on how you're going to go about things and each one is very different from the other and I think that's probably the first time that we've come across this uh, and since I'm a very emotional person I'm going to go with the emotional answer which is I intend to be brutal which kinda is the sense I'm getting from maybe where code is at right now also listen to the background music it's pretty ominous. Very good. Just be warned that someone called the press, so you might have a bit of attention on this one. Also, one more thing that you should know about the machine. It calls itself Coda. I hate to break the mood, but... Dude, that's meta. <laughs> Sorry, that's... Yeah, so maybe if he was addressing his actual feelings in the last game, this is even more so. He has labeled the machine. He has called, literally identified and tagged the machine that he was talking about in the last game. Something about 
the one that kept him going and protected him, he's labeled it Coda. Also, what's going on with press? Oh, ah! ah! Ma'am, do you know where the po poisonous machine is? Will it be punished? What could you see? Where's the machine now? Uh, where did you find the machine? Please, can you take a minute? This is all just paparazzi and press, but what is this supposed to be exactly? Press? Do you know what, uh, what are your next actions? What can you tell us? Will it be... So press really seems like it could only really symbolize observers. People who are invested. Hey, it's... Actually... <gasps> Guys, it's the it's the dots. It's the dots, isn't it? And of course, it's the machine. Isn't it the dots, or is it just me? That looks like the three dots that we've seen in almost every level, right? I mean, they're different sizes. They're different sizes, but all right. Do you guys think that it's the three dots that we've been seeing? Well, I'm not entirely sure what this machine is supposed to be. I mean, you can think it, it's creativity, but I'm not 100% sure of that. But we're talking to it, and it calls itself Coda. So, we can only say one thing to it. Hey, machine, you stopped. Options are... You stopped feeding us. Your work was keeping us alive. Your work was keeping us healthy. Maybe all of those are right. Maybe all of those are true. Those people out there, can you imagine what pain you've put them through? It was only because of your creations that any of us could make it through every day. How could we possibly go back to trusting you to do this job? It seems really loud to me, so I'm, I apologize if the, it seems really loud. Um, all those people out there? And then saying, because of your creations, that any of us could make it through every day? How? So keep, keep in mind, he has not shared these games with anyone. So who is he talking to? What are all those people out there? They're not viewers. They're not subscribers, they're not fans, they're not people that he really has an obligation to, um, like, like an obligation to. And then when he says it was only because of your creations that any of us could make it through every day, if he's talking about those people out there, that must mean that all of those people are fragments of himself. And when he says, how could we possibly go back to trusting you to do this job? Whatever this creative engine was that was allowing him to create games as his therapeutic outlet has not been feeding all of those parts of him anymore. It's not been helping. Because his creativity has failed him, his, his ability to make games has failed him. He has nothing else that's nourishing what he needs. So all those people out there, maybe he's fragmented himself so much that there's that many people out there. Or maybe the press and all those different people really signify a certain fragment. I'm gonna say it was only because of your creations. So here's what needs to happen. You need to go to the people who are out there and apologize to them. Are those his feelings? The press out there? You need to go to the people who are out there and apologize to them. Does he need to apologize to his feelings, which he's hurt? You have to admit to the people that you allowed them to suffer. Or I've been so alone. Well, I'm not sure about the first and second option, but uh, let's go with three. Apologize for leaving me. Apologize for leaving me. No? Nothing? Think carefully. I know how to hurt you. 
I've seen the thing you fear. Well, that's a bit aggressive. Think carefully, I know how to hurt you. That's aggressive. And number three, I've seen the thing you fear. That's just threatening. But since we don't know exactly what this engine cre uh this this engine represents, I mean my first initial idea is that it represents his creativity. His creativity has stopped. He's not able is it his motivation? Um something like that, but what does he mean, I know how to hurt you? But since we don't know exactly what this is, we don't know what would hurt him. What would hurt it. But then again, regardless of what it is, he's telling another part of himself that he knows how to hurt it. So he's saying he knows how to hurt himself. And that doesn't seem healthy either. I know he's trying... And this is honestly the best that he can do. Alright then. I will apologize to the people on your behalf. He can only be talking about some aspects of himself. Because nobody else is seeing these games. He's creating these games for himself. What is he talking about? All these people? The press? My followers! My friends. That is so bizarre. He doesn't have followers. What is he talking about? He doesn't he doesn't post these on YouTube. He doesn't do this for for acknowledgement or approval or anything like that. So I guess my friends even though he's not sharing this with his friends, he's only sharing them with Davy. But all these people, his friends, might be his feelings. It falls on me to deliver bad news. I have a troubling revelation. The machine will not apologize to us. The machine refuses to admit that it deliberately hurt us. Shit. These are the things he's saying to himself. And that sucks. It really sucks. But this is not important. We are stronger than it thinks we are. We will find a way to live without it. We do not need its games. Let's go with two. Let us pay it retribution. Let us show it that we are not failures. Follow me. We will destroy the machine. Follow me. We will destroy everything that machine has created. No. No. No, 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 no. I don't think that that's the right approach to it. No, don't destroy everything that machine has created. It did something for you. It did what you needed. It was what you needed at the time. Don't destroy everything. Those games that you made, you put your heart into, and you put effort, and you put your soul into. Don't destroy that. I don't... Alright, if we have to destroy something, let's just destroy the machine. You can give up on making games. Alright? If, if that's what you need, go ahead and close that door. And move on to something different that's going to work for you. But don't destroy your creations. I have a gun. Is this the same gun from an, uh, Project Whisper or something? <sighs> Can't Remember, go anywhere. Can click to fire the gun. Yes, Davy. I realize. I guess that's what I'm meant to do. I don't know what I'm meant to shoot at. Oh. He's destroying his creations. He's destroying everything he made. Coda, I will make sure your work dies here. Coda, I'll make sure you are known forever. So now the work is becoming self-destructive. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, 
Here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head, and that it's having a very negative effect on him, and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people, to get some actual feedback on his games. It might get him out of isolation. Isn't that what you're scared of? So, oh, fuck. As I'm thinking this, I realize that I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Coda to start actively soliciting feedback, so... No, he's too I afraid to. It. If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning back into his work? See, he's not capable of doing that for himself. He has to have somebody do it for him. This... If there, there could not be any more clear and concise illustration that all of this is destructive to him. Oh, balls! Oh. So I started showing Coda's work to people. I took this one, and the islands which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape games. I brought them to people that I knew and, and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his games. You know, the point of it all is just to give him some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. And maybe that's what he needed all along. Hi, machine. Maybe those three dots are the ones that we saw in his first works, and they represent the creative stamp. They represent the machine that was allowing him to create those things. Put the weapon down. I can't move. Ah, look, lamppost, lamppost on the side. Lamppost signifies destination, objective, and kind of literally, kind of literally means this is the end. And I can't turn left or right. I can't. I can't do anything. All I can do is fire. Can you see why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Yeah. This is the thing that I always feel like I need to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something. I really felt like I'd done something good, like. Like, I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves, and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. When they told me how much they enjoyed his games, it was the best feeling. It was the absolute best feeling. It, it made me feel so happy. So and that beautifully, beautifully happy. And that's all you can do. That's all you can do is what... What makes you happy, that's all you can go off of. So anyway, Coda finishes this game, and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Uh, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. This one is called The Tower. And to my knowledge, it's the That's last ominous. game that Coda ever made. So let's take a look. All right. Last game that Coda ever made. So uh, while Davy was giving his dialogue, just a couple of comments. Um, I think that that's all you really can do. Uh, Davy was also a creator. He created the Stanley Parable. He's created a, a bunch of other games and works that really you can say they were revolutionary on the creative front. The Stanley Parable? Have Had you seen anything like that bef before? Something uh, breaking the fourth wall with the comedy, with the different endings, everything's so expansive and open-worlded, basically, but open-worlded, but it's in a, a smaller space. Um, and so Davy really knew what it was somebody like him needed. 
and recognizing that game developers, game creators like himself, what it is they need, they need approval, maybe having lost his confidence and everything, what he really needed was validation. Davy recognizes that what Coda needs is external input. That's what he's lacking. You can see that through all, all of his games. What Coda needs is external output, uh, external input, but he can't do it. He cannot do it. So Davy takes the this collective of games, gives them to some people, knowing that it's great work, knowing that it's good stuff, and the positive reaction and reviews that everybody gave to him was Davy thinks exactly what he needed and maybe it was it sounds like it was but we're about to start the very last game that Coda created I'm just gonna peek over real quick just because I'm curious so far reminds me a lot of the very beginning of the uh, of the prison game just visually, real quick, uh, we have some really good lighting effects, uh, shadow effects. Um, he's come a long way. You got some good textures on the flooring. What I'm kind of noticing is you've got a little bit of a burst of color here. But the rest of it is is kind of cold. Uh, we got concrete. We've got gray and white. We got bright white fluorescent lighting feels a bit sterilized uh, but this little orange streak reminds you that it is Coda's remember in the very first level he ever made that was a counter-strike level he had those bright floating blocks that didn't have any explanation just added personality in any case we will continue with the tower in the last game that Coda ever made in the next video